night. All right. Back in Santa Monica. Do it I is so nice. Beach? I think you have to. I think you have to. It's Today really, really nice. Amazing. It's beautiful. Yeah, guys, thanks for joining. We're here to talk to you guys today about the state of the market. It's May 2023. We'll look back at these, you know, in like 10, 50, 100 years and say how wrong we were. <laughs> how wrong we were about like what we should have been doing. And uh, but yeah, hindsight's 2020. But all we can really do, and I was thinking about this on the way over, is like all we can really tell you guys is what we see, yeah. like because that's what we know, um, which is very limited. Like we we know our business, we know apartments in LA, and that's what we can share with you. Um, so yeah, just here to give you guys a state of the market for May 2023. So first we can start with the debt market. I think that's always, that's kind of been the hot topic the past year since rates started going up. Rates are still high. I mean, you go to get a loan, you're probably five, eight to six and a quarter. And the other thing that's still happening is that there's not that many lenders that are in the market. So if you're going to buy an asset, buy a building, it's who's even going to do the loan. It's, mm -hmm. Now it's, it used to be what's your interest rate and then everything with the with the regional banks now it's like well who's even going to do the loan um, so that's something that we're dealing with right now it's like if we're going to refinance we're going to buy a property is who can we even get a debt uh, get a loan from yeah so cash is king right i'm sure everyone's heard that saying and when the market goes down that saying becomes more true than ever right when when the market's up and there's lots of liquidity and banks are lending and investors are you know ready to pull a trigger on you know get really aggressive and take risks then like there's plenty of money around but when the market goes down and people get scared and banks start pulling back and investors start pulling back really cash is king and uh, you don't have the same amount of lenders out there that are competing for deals we're kind of competing for the lenders attention versus the lenders competing you know to you know to loan the money um, so that's on the on the lending the debt side and then on the rental side um, what we're basically seeing is that in the really prime markets, uh, we're seeing some rent growth, not tremendous rent growth by any mean, uh, but we're definitely seeing some, some incremental growth. Uh, so like Santa Monica, Venice, Mar Vista, the west side, we're seeing positive rent growth. Um, and then the other parts of town like Hollywood, Koreatown, downtown, those areas that have had um, a lot more housing stock added to the market over the last couple of years, those we're seeing are pretty flat. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely seeing like, we had, we had units in Koreatown that we leased a year and a half ago and they leased in a second. It, we almost felt like, are we giving too good of a mm -hmm. price? And now we're priced at the same rent and it's taking much longer to rent. So um, definitely the primer uh, parts of LA, we're seeing a uh, higher activity. Um, so we've talked about debt, we've talked about the rents, uh, we can talk about expenses, and that's this is something that's interesting that a lot of people don't talk about, but our expenses to own and operate these buildings has definitely gone up. Yep. Uh, we look at utility costs. Utility costs are up like over 10%. Um, we're looking at insurance. I think we've talked about insurance. Sim similar to the debt market, before there used to be all these carriers, all these policies you can get, and now not only is there a shortage of people uh, or, or of companies uh, giving out policies, but now when you used to get you know, insurance for five, $6,000, now it's costing eight to $10,000. And um, you know, so I think our expenses to, to operate these buildings has gone up probably 10, 15% net on, uh, you know, across the board. So it's getting much more expensive to be an owner. And then if you pair that with the fact that in city of LA, if you're subject to city of LA rent control, you can't even give rent increases. So your income's staying the same and your, and your expenses are rising and have no sign of stopping. Yeah, which basically means that you have to really buy right, yeah. right? Because there's no other way to make the deals pencil. If, if your rents are flat, your expenses are going up. So the question is like, why are we even doing this? And the answer is twofold. Number one, because long term, we don't see things, we don't see the rents being flat forever. We definitely see this being a lull in the market and long term, the rents are gonna keep going up in the good parts of town. Um, and the, the other reason is if you can find deals that are adjusted to today's market and you can get a deal relative to where pricing is today, then you can still make sense of, of a purchase. Um, the other thing I wanted to note on the uh, you know maintenance and repair side of operating buildings that construction costs have gone up and that doesn't just mean when you're renovating a unit it also means when you're going to repair a unit you know toilet breaks got to send a plumber out water, heater, water, water heaters have 
they used yeah. to be five, six hundred bucks. Now they're fifteen hundred to two thousand. It's crazy. Yep. So construction costs along those lines has also, you know, we've seen, and it, it, it to me it's like, and we're not really in the you know construction business in the weeds of it, so we don't really know, you know, are these price increases a result of logistics, of you know, COVID cost increase that people have just agreed to swallow those costs, or are there really still ongoing issues with producing, manufacturing? and shipping over the materials, which I don't really know, maybe you do. No, I, it's, I, whether, whatever it is, it's the fact that we still have to brunt that cost. Yeah. And it's, you know, labor still expensive, material still expensive, the wait time to get certain material. So we're definitely still facing these issues. I feel like we're like these like two old guys just complaining <laughs> like, oh, this is this Well, now sucks. let's get to the beauty. Yeah, yeah, okay, let's, let's, sum it up. Okay, let's so, do it. So these are the things that we're facing is debt, the rents, uh, rising costs. Um, so it's like, then, then why even buy? And it's what you alluded to. It's if you can get a deal that's adjusted to what's going on in the market today, we are vi not only are we optimistic on LA in the long term, we're optimistic on, on real estate in LA long term. And so if it's price adjusted today, meaning we're getting 20, 30% uh, of lower price deals to where we were a year ago or two years ago, you know, over the next two, five, ten years, we're gonna. Yeah. I th I believe that we're gonna look pretty smart, and, and and the deals that we're buying are, you know, good day one cash flow, upside to renovate the property, improve the income, build ADUs. So we're not buying the deal where it's maxed out, where we're facing a lot of risk. We're mm -hmm. buying deals where, hey, we're covering all these things. We have money left over to do distributions, like what we talked about last week in, in our Instagram live. Um, but now there's there's even room to grow in these deals and maximize yeah. the, the assets. I think essentially is if you can pinpoint the times in the market where it may not make it does not make as much sense to be a buyer, right? If you could pinpoint those times where it's less attractive to be a buyer and then find deals that still make sense in those environments and you can find deals that adjusted to those markets are still good deals then like you said we can look back in a couple of years and go wow i can't believe we were able to pick yeah. that deal up for that price and other people may be saying damn i wish i was more active yeah. in those you days know, the only problem that we're seeing right now it's 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 not that there's a shortage of opportunity to buy it's that sellers are really kicking themselves saying if i only sold six months ago yeah. if i only sold a year ago so there's still a hesitation for them to sell where the market is today uh, so we've seen a slowdown in transaction volume that hasn't stopped us from pursuing deals that make sense for us and our business plan and for our investors, but it de definitely has created a slowdown in the market. Yeah, so sale velocity has gone down significantly, and I think you know, the sellers that are selling now, it's not because they're you know, wheeling and dealing and trying to trade out of assets. And I mean, there are obviously, there's always gonna be a component of that in the market, um, but the, the meat and potatoes of the deals that we're seeing are really sellers of circumstance, people that inherited properties, people going through you know the, the, the six or seven Ds, death, divorce, uh, disillusion. Default. Default, exactly, that's a big one yeah. right now. So it, basically people that have to sell are coming to the table and saying, okay, I'm ready to make a deal. Um, other people who don't have to sell are saying, you know what, maybe I'll wait it out six, 12, 18 months and reevaluate where the market is down the line. Yeah, absolutely. So we're staying active, not only on the construction side, the rental side, but we're still buying assets. We're in a 1031 exchange. We're looking for more deals. Uh, so if you have anything you want to talk to us more about what's going on in real estate today, at Hueliahu, at the Goldfinger Group, max at the goldfingergroup.com. There you have it. Thanks for watching.